Hi, I'm Chris Oldland, Editor-in-Chief of Field Service News, and today I'm really pleased to bring you part two of our series of excerpts from a recent video presentation that I put together with John Hunt, Managing Director at MIA for Astia. The presentation is based around research that Astia undertook with WBR that focused on key trends amongst service-centric manufacturers. The full presentation has been made available to fieldservicenews.com subscribers already. However, if you are a field service management professional, you may well qualify for a complimentary industry subscription. And if you complete the link below to apply for your subscription, we will send you a copy of this full presentation. And you can access that either by downloading the file or watching it online for exclusive access to field service news premium content. And so in this second excerpt, we'll be looking at how the respondents of the research stated that their most cited goal for the next 12 months is increasing innovation, agility and internal resources to support new service offerings and what that means to both field service and manufacturing at large. Okay, so one of the things that came to me as well, talking about aims and goals for the, the companies and the service companies that were in the, mm. the survey, respondents' most cited biggest goal for 2018 to 2019 is increasing innovation, agility and internal resources to support new offerings. Now, obviously that's great news for field service delivery. Um, it's great news for us talking about it. It's great news for you as a, a provider to the market. Mm. Um, but often those of us that are close to the coalface, the kind of guys that I'll um, catch up with at the various conferences that I'll be at, um, one thing that anecdotally comes through is they see the need to kind of put the for investment in tools like SDS platform, etc. Um, but then they need to give advice further up to those in the higher echelons. And it's it's becoming less prevalent. Um, Service has certainly got more of a voice on the executive board, but it's perhaps we're talking about the, again those twenty percent that are in the, the early adopters. They, they, there's still an awful lot of companies where service is seen as a little bit of a dark art, seen as something that's kind of a necessary evil that people don't really get in the upper boards and the finance and the procurement sides. Um, how should service directors listening to this now, have you got any advice for them on how best to build the argument to, when they're speaking to the, the powers that be, when they're speaking to the CFOs and the CEOs to say, we need this, this is, you know, we don't want to be the laggard, we don't want to be the guys with the car still in the uh, garage when everyone else is whizzing around the track. What advice would you give them on that job? Yeah, and, and this might, I hope this doesn't appeal to a, to too small a segment, uh, too small a segment of our audience here, but uh, Chris, have you ever seen the game show, um, Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? <sighs> We're in Britain. It was one of our finest exports. So yeah. <laughs> yeah. So Chris, as a um, as a United States citizen and as a uh, a resident here now of the UK for well over five years, um, the Americans also uh, we like to steal television shows and ideas. So it's also a very popular show yeah. in the states. I know we got a wide audience here, and I think it's been exported elsewhere. But there's a concept in Who Wants to Be a Millionaire called phone a friend. Mm, yes. Yeah. So you, as a contestant, you're on the show. You're very smart in a lot of a lot of ways, right? And as a service director, very smart in the provision of service. However, those contestants are, have the ability to phone a friend, and they pick those friends based on certain topics they might think come up. Mm. Right? So, my best recommendation to a, to a services director is phone a friend, mm. phone a friend like Astia that that has done this for nearly 40 years. Next yeah. year will be our 40 year anniversary. That can assist in understanding what your organization's biggest problems are, whether that be related to service or not at mm -hmm. present, but eventually the service of that product will be the biggest problem. Right? And I would contend that for manufacturers, it will be the biggest problem with their organization. If it already isn't, it will be within the next several years, yeah. given the way the market is going. And more advanced services solutions, and as the other parts, that are already well automated on the factory floor with ERP systems, et cetera, become even more mature and get upgraded, this will be the biggest problem they have um, within the next few years. Phone a friend. And our perspective, such as Astia, and there are others, but phone a friend and invite them directly into the dialogue with the board. Yeah. Our most successful customers, uh, services directors specifically, that have to sell this to their executive management team, 
they don't just simply allow us uh, to educate them on how to do mm-hmm. that. They bring us directly into the dialogue. Makes a lot of sense. We're seated at the same table with them mm-hmm. to present our learnings in a very contextual way that makes the most sense to that board member or yeah. that executive management team member. That services director understands their business, their product, their services mm-hmm. model the best. And companies like us understand how to yeah. optimize that services model to get to the right people and the right parts to the right place at the right time and work with that entire ecosystem yeah. within the entire service cycle from point of use to the service point to forward logistics, reverse logistics, mm. the remote communications from the back office all the way out to the mobile field engineers who can work with our solutions in real time when they're connected or when they're in the basement of the building or the basement of a consumer's home with no connectivity, are still able to move fluidly through that service cycle to offer a, I can continue to call it a wonderfully delightful customer experience. Sure. Yeah. No, that make, makes an awful lot of sense. And like I say, it's, service touches so many different other of those, and increasingly so, touches other areas of that ecosystem. Just one quick point on that. Um, let just just fast forward in that that hypothetical. Um, scenario for a moment let's say they 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 bring the friend in they get the buy-in in terms of implementation it's just because you mentioned the, the engineers there um i i use kind of again it's a little bit anecdotal although we did do some research on it but it's a little bit a little bit dated now it's a couple of years ago where we found that companies that brought a selection of engineers to feedback during the implementation process and obviously there's change management elements mm-hmm. in that as well but to actually say well look this is how we will be using the tools. We found a few years back that invariably the the, the, pick, the pickup rate and the, uh, the 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 speed that these companies saw the ROI was dramatically bigger. But there was a real there was very very few companies that were doing it. Is that something that you come across? Is it something that you advise when you when when you go into implementation phase to get the actual end users, the guys that are going to be using the mobile tools or the dispatch tools in the back office or anything? Is that something that you bring into the you advise companies to do, or is there is there a, a kind of no set eat the template? This is how you do it. It's got to be evolved company by company. I know I've thrown that at you. So. Well, no, it's, it's actually a fantastic question. And many in, in, in product product manufacturers will appreciate this. Um, I hope they will appreciate this. So when when they develop brand new products or mm-hmm. extensions of their products, I'm sure that the vast majority of them take take great advantage of focus groups. Yeah. With their end customer is going to buy the product. It's no different mm. than the employees that will use an automated solution that will help them service the product. You've got to understand what drives that focus group, what motivates that focus group, and want that focus group to pull. Yes. Just like the the, the business to business customer or the consumer, they want demand to pull mm. the product. You can't force it upon them. Yeah. The same thing happens with your internal customers who are. The back office users, the dispatchers, the mm. schedulers, the people in logistics, the people in the yep. repair depot, and the mobile field engineers are most important because they make up the vast majority of the service yep. ecosystem. They are that point that can lose a mm. customer in second, or if they're St. Peter the plumber, yes, yep. can help you gain a customer for life. Mm. So what better group to advise you on what works and what does not work in that group? Have them be a part of the mission mm. and have them pull the adoption of that solution. These people want nothing more than to be able to do their job yep. easily and effectively, and at the end of the day, delight a human being with whom they're interacting. Yep. That's, there's, there's no better feeling than delighting a human that you're working with yep. Yep. On, on having a great experience. And on the flip side, at least to me, there's nothing more embarrassing than not doing mm. a great job with the customer. And even more frustrating in today's day and age, in November of 2018, when technology actually inhibits or limits your ability to do that. Mm. That shouldn't be the case. There are enough solutions out there provided by a number of different companies. Mm. Right? Astia happens to offer the entire service lifecycle management solution suite under one umbrella, but I know that's not for everybody. There are enough companies present in this world now where technology should never be an inhibitor to the person on dispatch scheduling, logistics and the repair depot, and particularly the field engineer, Mm. where it limits them. I think it's inexcusable in today's day and age when that could happen. And that brings us to the end of this excerpt from the presentation. Now, if you've enjoyed this content and you would like to see the full presentation, all you need to do is 
subscribe to fieldservicenews.com on the link below. Make sure you use the link below because that is the one that will get you access to this presentation sent directly to you. And you will also then get emails that will keep you up to date with any new content we put out, whether it be white papers, more video presentations, podcasts and research ourselves. Anyway, thank you ever so much for listening and we shall see you again soon. Take care. Thank you.